Welcome to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, brought to you by Pilma. This podcast helps lead lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Here is your legal marketing expert and host, Ken Hardison. Well, hello everyone, Ken Hardison here with another episode of Grow Your Law Firm. And today we have Tanner Jones with Consult Webs. Uh, Tanner, welcome to the show. Glad to be here, Ken. Always a pleasure. And so tell, tell us a little bit about what Consult Webs does and what you do with Consult Webs. Most certainly. Yeah, Consult Webs was founded back in 1999, well before the internet was cool. Most, most attorneys were just being asked about putting a website up at that time, and Dale Tincher was our founder. Um, he, he started the company really with the emphasis of helping law firms reach the market. Lawyers at that time were so used to reaching the market with traditional advertising, you know, double truck, yellow page ad or television advertising. And that was pretty much the meat of it. And the internet created a whole new opportunity, especially for smaller to mid-sized firms to take advantage. And, you know, the last 23 years have been us painting a moving train, that moving train being Google primarily and keeping our clients visible in, in their market areas for case driving terms. So that's, that's how we help the market. And we work with over 120 law firms across the country. Damn. I I remember, uh, I first met Dale, uh, probably before you were born, but (laughs) maybe not, but, but, uh, it was in 2022 or 2023. I went to this marketing conference, uh, 2002 or 2003. Yeah, 2002, 2000, yeah. yeah, 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I missed a, misspoke. And, uh, you know, internet was just a damn new thing. I mean, I was on TV, but I had, and uh, I heard Dale speak. I sat with him during that weekend and I hired him. I hired y'all back in, I don't remember if it was 2002 or 2003. It's been over 20 years though. Mm-hmm. 2002, and, I believe. Yeah, so it's been yeah. a long time, and uh, yeah, and I think my firm still uses you. I think. Absolutely, yes, still so work with them. Mm-hmm. That's got to be a that's got to be a miracle because I don't know any law firm that stays with any SEO kept me over five years. Hardly, <laughs> <laughs> it, it is unheard of. I mean, we we are one of the longest standing, if not the longest standing, uh, SEO or web marketing companies that that cater exclusively to lawyers but you're right to, to maintain a relationship over a couple of decades says quite a bit in this day yeah. and time yeah so i want to talk about something today that you're going to be talking about in a lot more detail because we just don't have enough time here today but you're going to be artificial intelligence and and tanner's going to be speaking he speaks uh unlike most vendors when he gets up there he doesn't try to sell anything he really just tries to get value and uh, people respect that from you, Tanner, to uh, be honest with you. Um, but uh, May the 16th through the 18th, uh, the Pilma Summit, uh, uh, just like my hat says, Pilma. And uh, yeah, we got a, we got a big lineup. we got some other lawyers going to go in there and talk about how they're using artificial intelligence to manage their cases and firm. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to talk about marketing with uh, with AI, or, or whatever. I guess that's the short term for it now. That's right. But uh, so tell for the people who don't know what is artificial. I mean, we we've been using artificial intelligence anyway. We just don't think about it that way with smartphones and and Alexa and things like that. Really, I mean, if you mm-hmm. think about it, don't we? You you would be surprised. And in fact, I, I want to hit on a quote at some point today. Uh, which which may blow the minds of of the listeners, but AI is not anything new. It feels like that. You know, the media would have us think otherwise, and uh, even marketers would make you making you think that this is just a you know completely new technology that's just disrupting everything. And to some degree, they are right. Um, but this yeah. is not this is not something that's just been invented overnight. Um, literally decades decades of of emphasizing this technology. Yeah. So, you know, so, you know, the reason I think it's so big is because I'm watching what the big players are doing Mm -hmm. when Microsoft just invested $10 billion into uh, open air. What do you call it? Open air? Open AI. Open AI. I always Mm -hmm. want to call it open air, but open AI, which developed the 
what well, all the crazy is what chat GPT. That's it. They got, they got what over a hundred million users, and it's mm-hmm. like crazy, man. It's like yep. never seen anything with this many users this quick. They're they're anticipating one billion in annualized revenue by twenty twenty four. I believe (laughs) (laughs) a billion. Right. So that, yeah, it's unreal um, how, how fast and explosive this type of technology is going to, to move, not just through the legal industry, but legitimately through every industry there is, Um, you know, let, let me step back just a moment, just for the listeners, Ken, artificial intelligence is what we're referring to. And it's, it's really, it's, it's a model. It's a, it's an information model that's creating intelligence out of um, machines, out of computer information. So you've probably heard the concept junk in, junk out, you know, with respect to software. Well, to a large degree, that's artificial intelligence. You need intelligence. You need factual data and a set of data for these machines to interpret and to understand. Artificial intelligence can be used um, in a lot of different ways, uh, visual perception, speech speech recognition, uh, decision making, or finding the most or highest probable decision or outcome, language translation, content creation, any type of automation where you can use information and start to um, take that information and essentially create an outcome, you know, create a an end result from it. That is, in a sense, artificial intelligence, and we've been using it like I mentioned, for decades. In fact, I'll tell you, uh, share a quote here. Um, This was a quote by Larry Page. He was a co-founder of Google. He said, artificial intelligence would be the ultimate version of Google, the ultimate search engine that would understand everything on the web. It would understand exactly what you wanted, and it would give you that right thing. We're now here doing that, he said. However, we can get incrementally closer to that, and that is basically what we work on, referring to the Google search engine. Any guesses on when he wrote that? About 10 years ago? 2000. Really? In the year 2000, Larry Page wrote that, and that that just seemed like (laughs) a completely different language to most people 23 years ago. Um, today we're actually seeing it. And, and the truth is Google's been using artificial in, intelligence and machine learning and their algorithm for years and years, literally decades now. And, and let me just give a quick example of what this looks like. You know, I'm, I'm based close to Asheville, North Carolina. I can pull up my a Google search uh, browser right now and I can type in car accident lawyer. Google's recognizing a lot of different factors unique to me. They're they're factoring in where I'm physically located by my IP address, but they're also taking into account my history, my search history, my click history, uh, who I am as a searcher, and they're catering search results as best they can to me as the individual searcher. Ken, you're based in Myrtle Beach. You do that same exact search. You obviously have different search history. You're going to see very different search results displayed on page one with the exact same search query as what I used, right? Right. And so Google is constantly evaluating how users are interacting with those search results, and they are replacing different search results if they're not getting as many click-throughs or maybe users are not staying on their page as long compared to other competition. And Google is using that artificial intelligence to constantly improve the overall user experience. And searchers, users, are actively feeding into this intelligence every single second, every single day. And that's what makes Google the juggernaut it is. You you know, about three or four years ago, maybe five years ago, a gentleman approached me. He says, I've got this chat bot. And I said, how are you doing it? He says, "I'm, I'm, I'm paying IBM to use their computer Watson, mm-hmm. which is, a, and I guess in a, in a sense, it's artificial intelligence because it keeps learning, right? That's right. It keeps learning and everything. And he was using that. He was leasing, I guess, or whatever, part of Watson's brain to, to help create this chat bot for, for, uh, for, for law firms websites. It was crazy. That's I, I, fascinating. Yeah, I, and, and, and five years ago, I, I pushed it out to my masterminds. And nobody was interested, you know. And, <laughs> yep. and of course, th- things change, right? You know, Th- I was I was so 
so I, I was doing a lot of research on this everywhere I could find some YouTube video. And I'm sitting here watching how much money Microsoft put into uh, open AI. And then they also got a deal of doing that is they got to use open eye technology to put into Bing. And I said, mm -hmm. well, this is going to change everything. Bing's going to become better than Google. And then like a week later, I see where Google's come out with their own deal called BARD, B-A-R-D. Yep. And uh, they're actually doing some beta testing now, I guess. Mm -hmm. They got people, you know, you can, I think you can get it yourself if you want to. Yeah, I, I believe Google stated they went into code red mode, you know, when, when that happened. But but the, the, the truth is, just as we've already iterated, Google was already aware of this. They were already investing in this technology long before this news broke. Um, but you, there's no question about it. They felt at risk with this technology and what it could ultimately do to disrupt their own user base in Google, which has been a true monopoly, arguably, um, for so yeah. long from yeah, a search 90, standpoint. Yeah, 90%, right? Mm -hmm. 90 they either go through them or YouTube, which they own, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how do you see, you know, how do you see businesses, law firms using this for, you know, um, what, what, you know, is this going to, is this going to put SEO companies out of business? Is this going to put, you know, your SEO company, right? Yep. What do you think about this? Yeah, there's no question that consult webs, uh, search engine optimization makes up a, a pretty healthy percent percentage of our business, um, probably over 60% of our business. Um, and so there's no question this is this is something we're staying very, very uh, attentive to, and we're testing. And that's the biggest thing right now. It's not, the sky is not falling. You know, there have been so many evolutions to search, to search behavior, to the search landscape. You know, Google incorporated local services ads, I guess it's been about two and a half years ago uh, for the personal injury vertical. And, and it was as if, you know, the market wanted everyone to feel like the sky was falling, that SEO was dead. We heard a lot of that. Then uh, SEO continues to be the best lead generator for our clients and generates the lowest cost per client acquisition compared to virtually any other marketing channel that we manage. Search engine optimization is not dead. In fact, there are more users going to Google than ever before. However, it is going to change. And, and I think specifically for our business, you know, content writing, I uh, just went out to a tech conference. Ken, you were there uh, this past week, and, and I brought along our lead content writer. He's a licensed attorney. He's been uh, editor of Lawyers Weekly North Carolina and Lawyers Weekly South Carolina in the past. He's been in this space for a long, long time producing content. And he was telling me that in, in our research and testing testing this technology, he was quite amazed at how quickly and, and to some degree, how closely um, that content resembles an actual legal writer just within seconds of being prompted. But, but he did distinguish there's, there's still AI fingerprints all along this content. And, and that's from a human interpretation standpoint. Google is even more sophisticated in their technology and their ability to be able to identify plagiarism and AI produced content. Um, there's even companies out there today, software companies that have created tools that once you create content through chat GPT, you can then turn around and paste that content in basically an AI scrubber, right? <laughs> to remove the fingerprint. But even with those tools, we're still finding 30, 40% plagiarism um, with this content. And so as of today, we see this as a much greater tool with respect to idea, ideation, I, you know, creating concepts or new ideas that can keep you competitive uh, or, or new angles of the law that you can take that it can kind of inspire writers. Um, but as of today, we strongly advise law firms not singularly use a program like ChatGPT to produce content for their websites because the harm, the harm is ultimately while you may see some improvement or bounce in um, search rankings and even traffic, Google clearly has their eyes on this. 
And and what we're concerned about here, Ken, is is much like what uh, if history repeats itself, it is very likely marketers and law firms alike are going to allow this type of technology to push them back into the mindset of quantity over quality. Um, because yes, with a tool like Chat GPT, I could turn out a hundred pages of content before the end of the day. It's three forty-eight p.m. By five p.m., I could have a hundred substantively written pieces of content to add to a website. But again, the harm is once Google identifies that this is all AI-generated content, it loses credibility, and in turn, you have risk of losing rankings. Another factor is that artificial intelligence does not come with critical thinking or emotional um, empathy. And, and you know as well as I do in the legal space, emotions are high. Empathy is literally everything when it comes to that first impression with your law firm. And, and do you resonate with that individual? Unique value proposition is missing entirely from AI-generated content. And so that's really what I would stress is use it as a tool don't use it as an employee. Yeah, I think, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, this is my take. My take is it's not going to replace people, but it's going to make you be able to be a, like 10 times more efficient, 100 times. More. You still got to have that human eye on it because you got to. My understanding is a lot of this stuff is still not 100% factually correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. You got to check that out. And yep. then you've got to put the voice in it, you know, and you've got to, uh, and like Chat GPT. Only goes up to twenty twenty one, through twenty twenty one. Yep. And uh, but yep. So uh, it's working off of a dated, uh, yeah. just dated. Which I think that'll change. I, I think we're just at the tip of the iceberg. Uh, that's what I think. I don't know about you. I think mm -hmm. here. Here's what I. The reason I want to talk about this is because a lot of lawyers, when the internet came out, uh, just ignored it or either stuck their head in the sand like mm -hmm. ostriches and says, you know. I'm too old for this. Um, I'm doing good. And they didn't adapt. And here's the deal I know. For businesses to survive and grow and keep scaling, you've got to adapt to the changes. It's like when I left my law firm in, in 1996, I practiced 14 years without doing any marketing other than Yellow Pages. Mm -hmm. But I saw it was changing. And our, our lines was going straight instead of like up. And I said, we've got, and, and I've just deduced it was because of the, there was a lot more marketing going on, TV, radio, billboards, yellow pages, double trucks. I mean, maybe before the internet. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, we got to adapt or we're going to die. And uh, the firm I left did, would not do it. And, uh, you know, they were doing the same business, same type of business, same level of income. 10 years later, and I had grown to, you know, uh, leaps and bounds. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. 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 I was, I was, yeah. I, I was not bragging, but we were doing okay. Uh, about 30 times more than I was when I was with that firm. And that was a great firm. You know, one of the partners has died. The other one went off to be a district attorney. So, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. and I went and built the third, you know, the second largest PI firm in the state. At that time, I don't know that it is now, but it was when I sold it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I don't think it's going to replace anything. But I think what I and the reason I'm pushing this stuff out there is I don't want people to ignore it like they did because I had some good friends that were large that just ignored the internet until it was too late. Mm -hmm. that they try to get in it, and I see it, and you see this too. If you got an SEO twenty years ago, like I did then the quality, just the longevity of that link, of that URL mm -hmm. is worth a lot of money, right? It's it's a huge asset for you. Yeah. You know, you that, know what I'm saying? ahead of the market. Yeah. And so that put us at, at, a, at a competitive advantage, whereas a lot of my buddies and some of my competitors didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And then when they tried to get into it, it cost them a lot more, took a lot longer time. You know, it, like places like New York, Chicago, LA, it's about impossible now. The, the SEO because there's so much been there so long. I don't know. Well, you, you can tell a lot more about that than I can. But I, I can appreciate you you sounding the alarm, if you will, to the market. Uh, we, you know, it's akin to they they mentioned it this past this tech conference we attended. It, it it's like those 
those naysayers when, you know, Henry Ford brought out the T model Ford and um, everyone preferred their, their horse, you know, that was the preference. That's what they knew. And you can imagine if you're in a race, someone in a, a, a new T model, you know, and you're on that horse, eventually that horse needs to drink some water, needs to eat. He's going to slow down. And, and that's where the automobile industry just totally tran transformed so many industries because of that technology. And, and then fast forward to the internet, just as you're, you know, mentioning you were, you were smart enough at that time and forward thinking enough to say there's something here. And, and, you know, it may, it may not go as where I, where I think it's going to go, but I'm going to be on top of it. And, and I think that's really what, what I would stress to your listeners today is this is big. In fact, this could be one of the biggest disruptors we will see in our lifetime when it comes to um, technological advancement. And the thing about this technology is that it doesn't just change things and then grow stale. The thing about this technology is that it's self-learning and it improves upon itself. And, and there very well may come a time where you know, your entire calendar, your, your marketing calendar for the next 30 days is presented to you algorithmically through AI and you go through and approve all of the ads and the ad copy that it's presenting to you based on what has worked historically. Right. I don't believe we're too far away from that. And, you know, think about that. It's something where it's, if it's improving that fast and you're leveraging this technology and you're in a market area where the vast majority of your competition is just staying the course on what they've always known. Think about how exponentially faster you can move beyond them. And, and it's not just content we're talking about. You know, I asked ChatGPT earlier, you know, what are some of the ways ChatGPT will revolutionize a law firm's practice? And we've talked about content writing and writing assistance, but, you know, it even got into social creation. So topic creation, if maybe you're comfortable standing in front of a video camera all day long, but you struggle coming up with topics or different angles, well, ChatGPT can be your solution because you can ultimately take the, the outputs that it's delivering based on your inputs. You know, I, I give me um, five tips for someone who has been hit by a commercial truck on the interstate. And, and chat GPT will produce five tips. Those five tips may not be all accurate, but you can at least get some ideas or concepts from that and run with that. So that's a very you know practical, very easy way to use this technology. But where I believe it'll become even more impactful, which I believe uh, Justin Lovely is going to be speaking about his operations and how he's leveraging AI at your Pilma Summit in New Orleans. And, and I think that that's really where it's going to truly disrupt the law practice, or at least operations and what we've known, um, discovery, um, case review, document review, um, you know, summarizing um, extensive legal documents, um, making it, you know, creating bite-sized chunks, making it easy to interpret, uh, maybe even leveraging it for trial law in terms of how can I take this very complex situation and break it down to where a fifth grader can in can easily understand it. And then now you have some guidance when you're speaking to a jury. Truly, like the sky is the limit when it comes to leveraging this type of technology to make our lives easier. But I'm going to reiterate one thing you said. This technology is not, it's not necessarily intended or created to replace human beings in the workplace. However, if you're a law firm and you have a, a large staff and that large staff is spending manual hours doing repeated tasks, I can guarantee you those individuals can be working on more high productive work, more critical thinking tasks that require skill sets and experience that cannot be replicated through artificial intelligence. And all those tasks that, that you're pulling off of their plate should absolutely be applied toward artificial intelligence. That's the place to start for a law firm. And so things are changing. It's just a matter, as you said, the law firms that are willing to take notice and begin testing it and, and seeing how they can begin to, to utilize this in their practice. It may not be perfect immediately, but they're the ones who are going to be well ahead of the curve 
when it's truly adopted nationwide. And I, and I think the big deal now is going to be people, you know, it's sort of like uh, leading leaders. Leaders ask the right questions. But in this stuff, if you don't ask the right question in a certain way, you're probably not going to get a really good answer. So you, you, there's an art to what I'm hearing. Uh, I hadn't played on it that much, but what I'm hearing is is that it you there's an art to they call them prompts, I think. Uh, but it's how you ask the question uh, is, is is just as important as anything else. And and I think there's going to be I think you're going to see courses out there and gurus how to use it on how to use. I think you're going to see people. I already seen mm-hmm. one guy. Already got a three day event in Vegas in April uh, about how to use how to you know how to turn it you know how to become a millionaire. I don't know that that's going to happen, but, but the deal yeah. is, you know, one of the things he's going to be teaching is how to you know how do you ask the questions? You know how do you how do you do questions for a, for a blog? How do you do questions for you know for social media? You know how do you create something? Uh, you know, a, a picture or or you know, photograph because it, you can do that now with this artificial intelligence. Yep. I think it's still a little bit, not quite there because I've seen some of it and it's not quite all correct. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. Like I've seen some people with five fingers. Okay. <laughs> you know, so it's not a hundred percent, but I think we're, that's, that's the deal. I don't think it's going to overnight change anything, but I think it's at the tip of the iceberg. Mm-hmm. Listen, when the microchip came out, it made a big little, it was a big deal, but look at how many times it's grown, how fast the microchips got. Now my phone can do more than my first computer I bought exactly. in 1982. Or no, 80, no, 88. I think I bought my first computer, 86 or 88. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. I paid over $5,000 for it, and my phone could do as faster than that computer was. Yeah, that's you it. Know? I mean, you know, so I think it's, we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. I think it's going to be so much, but I think you got to get in just like the guys that got in on the internet, get in on the bottom ring so that you are ahead of your competition. And it don't have to be you. You can be, you know, uh, you can be somebody in your firm. You know, it don't have to be you, I don't think. I mean, you know, uh, to be honest with you, you know, I'm probably going to have somebody else doing this stuff for me. I might come up with ideas, but. Yep. I'm not going to be doing it per se. It's fun to play with, but really getting down, to, I'm not, that's not where my best talent, that's not where my best, you know, use of time is. But just like you said, it could free up time for people. You know, I, I thought about this. What if you go offshore, get people for $5 an hour and get them using chat GPT to do the rope work. Then you just really have like probably increased your net profit by 10%. I mean, not overnight, but I'm just mm-hmm. saying, I mean, when I say not 10%, I'm talking about an extra. If you're doing 20%, yeah. you might could be making 30%. That's that's what I was thinking. More significant than 10% yeah, yeah, gains yeah, yeah, on yeah, margins. Yeah, like 30, yes. 40%. Because, because as we know, the biggest cost of running any business, law firms do, is labor. And the second biggest cost is marketing, right? That's it. And these two, this uh, stuff, fits right in there on both of them and i just think you know i don't know we'll see you're you're, you're right and it's difficult you know we all want to make predictions and 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 yeah. anticipate where it's going I, I i'm really fond of listening to some of elon musk's interviews around artificial intelligence and where he predicts it will be in five to ten years just because i believe he he has his ear to the ground on that he's obviously been been well invested in this technology and he's he's one of the greats in terms of just his his innovative mind and he speaks to some pretty um what seem like today very bizarre happenings that will come from ai even to the point where this type of technology if if it's not well monitored and governed has the potential to ultimately reshape society as we know it you talk about, you know, where law firms and you know where they're spending, um, where they're spending money on administrative tasks and operational tasks, things that truly will be totally transformed by artificial intelligence. Um, Elon Musk anticipates 
a, a global major impact on unemployment, unemployment rates going um, sky high and ultimately more of a um, more of a social uh, socialism uh, push across the across the world um, because essentially robots will be performing the majority of these you know minutia tasks that we're currently operating in. And I share that certainly not to scare scare any listeners, but this is this is real. And and like you said, don't stick your head in the sand and just think it's going to pass over. It's not going anywhere. We have to embrace this technology, and and hopefully we have good stewards uh, of those that are actually using the technology and working to advance civilization and advance our businesses in a yeah. positive way. Yeah. Well, listen, this has been great. Uh, anybody want to pick your brain or, or just talk to you? Uh, how can they get up with you, Tanner? Sure. Yeah. Well, I'd love to see you at the Pilma Summit in New Orleans. Uh, so definitely register for that if you haven't done that. But come see us at consultwebs.com. Uh, feel welcome to, to get a free marketing plan on the website there. Just click on the homepage and you'll be able to see the free marketing plan or give us a call. We'd love to talk to you. Okay. Well, listen, this is great. I look forward to seeing you uh, in uh in May in New Orleans down at the Ritz Carlton. It's always fun. And uh, we got a load of great speakers, man. Uh, you included. Uh, it's going to be great. All right. Until next time, this is Ken Hardison, dedicated to your success. You have been listening to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, the podcast that leads lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Go to growyourlawfirm.com to find more ways to market and manage your law firm. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcasts.